Oftentimes, one of the most common calls we get from customers in the start of summer is that their air conditioner just isn't keeping up. And in this video, we're going to talk about why and some easy things you can check first that might be the culprit. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's a free way you can support the channel and help us grow, and it is much appreciated. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few things you can do to make sure your system is running efficient. Now, these are the first things we always check when we show up to a house and a system isn't keeping up. And we'll also talk about some load calculations and whether or not you even have the right size system uh, for your home. And we will also talk about an often overlooked and little discussed topic regarding ductwork sizing and how it plays into system sizing and some nuances that are especially true in Colorado and mountain regions at higher elevations that are often overlooked. And at the end of this video, we'll talk about how you can tell whether or not your system is sized properly for your home and what a properly sized system looks like when it is running in the heat of summer. So first off, if your system isn't keeping up right now, there's three things you absolutely have to go check because these are often the culprit. Now, number one is a dirty filter. A dirty filter restricts airflow and can cause all sorts of system issues like icing, et cetera. And even if your filter is clean, if you have a very restrictive high MERV rating, one inch thick filter, oftentimes this can cause problems as well. The second thing to look at is make sure all of the vents in the home, or at least most of them are open. And you might be thinking to yourself, yes, of course, 100% of the vents are open. I'm sure of it. I would still go double check. And the reason I say this is because even if a customer tells us the vents are open when we show up to the house, we still verify and double check. And 50% of the time, there will be four or five vents closed in a house that maybe only has 10 or 15 vents. And this is going to cause issues, especially in the mountain regions and at higher elevations. And I'll explain why on that later. And the last thing you want to go check is if your condenser outside is clean. Now, a dirty condenser can also cause issues with the system icing up. And if you go outside and see white frost on the suction line or the compressor, the best thing to do is turn off your AC and run the indoor fan until the system thaws and check all the other things because the vents being closed in combination with a dirty filter and or a dirty condenser will all cause system icing and cause the system to not keep up. Now, even if your logic is, oh, I just want to close the vents in the rooms I'm not using so that it forces air to the upstairs or to the rooms I am using, fortunately, it does not work like that. So if you've already done that and all your vents are open and it's still not keeping up, Let's now talk about load calculations. So if your home was built in the last 50 years, when your home was built, a calculation called a load calculation was performed on your home. And what a load calculation is, is a measurement of how well a home is insulated and what the heating and cooling demands of the house will be given to specific measurements. Now, these measurements are your indoor and your outdoor design temperatures. These will vary by region. Typically, your indoor design temperature is somewhere around 74 for cooling and 70 for heating. Now, this is defined as the temperature that your system is designed to maintain inside your home. The second measurement is your outdoor design temperature, and this is simply the outdoors that you are exposed to in the peak summer and the peak of winter. So when your contractor built the home, they had to provide these calculations based on several factors like the insulation and the rating of the windows and doors, and then they used this load calculation to determine the right size equipment for your home. And when you're performing this load calculation on a track home, they use standard temperatures like I quoted you above. However, when a contractor like us comes into your home and is retrofitting your system, oftentimes the first question we ask the homeowner is how comfortable are you currently and is it keeping up? And if the answer is no, we ask them what their design temperatures are and perform a load calculation that way. For example, we have some customers that like it very cold and I have had customers ask me to get their home down to 60 degrees. And unfortunately, the design limits of most residential refrigerants are capped at 64 degrees. So when we provide estimates, that's one of the most important questions we ask our customers is what temperature do you like to keep it? Because that will help us with system sizing. Now, for example, if you want a house that is 68 degrees, that's going to require a bigger system to keep up in the middle of summer. And therefore, it's also going to require bigger ductwork, which brings me to point number three, and that is the constraints of your ductwork sizing. 
Now what most people may not realize is that the size of your air conditioner is also limited by the size of your ductwork because there is a minimum amount of airflow required per ton of cooling and that minimum measurement is 300 cubic feet per minute of air per ton of air conditioning and that is a minimum. The suggested airflow is 400 cubic feet per minute but it will technically run with 350. Now if you happen to live in the Denver metropolitan area or any of the front range mountains or throughout the high desert of Arizona or New Mexico or Utah, what you might not realize is you actually have to decrease the capacity of your ductwork by 20 or 30%. And what I mean by this is a six inch duct at sea level will actually move 20 to 30% more airflow than it will between six and 8,000 feet, for example, if you live in Colorado or Utah. And the reason this is relevant is because unfortunately, track home builders don't design homes differently to account for altitude. And as a result, we are stuck with ductwork that is undersized for our needs. So if you happen to live in one of the markets I mentioned uh, where you're at an elevation above 5,000 feet, then unfortunately you probably have ductwork that is sized properly for a home at sea level. And this explains why your system is either not running properly or has reduced airflow. Which brings me to point number four, and it's a question you might have right now, which is what happens if I just put in a bigger size system without increasing the ductwork? And the short answer is no, it will not work. And this is a common scenario we run into where people have chronic icing issues. Oftentimes we run into this when we go to a home and a customer says they've had several other companies come out and no one can fix it. And it's only after we look at it and look at the ductwork size, which all of our guys are trained to look for the specific reason. When we go through training, we always drill apprentices on airflow, airflow, airflow for this specific reason. If a system does not have enough airflow, it's going to ice up and cause problems. And the only solution is to increase the ductwork which is sometimes an option if it's marginal and you have to or you have access to the basement and are able to run one or two new ducts and only need one or two additional ducts but if the system is grossly oversized by one ton or more then oftentimes we're looking at replacement in order to get it to work properly and sometimes what will happen is if the system is keeping up even when it's oversized what happens is that it is very inefficient because it is short cycling on and off constantly and this will cause two unwanted things. Now, number one is it puts a lot of premature wear and tear on the equipment. And number two is it jacks up your electric bill. Which brings me to point number five, and that is how to tell if a system is sized properly for your home and what are the symptoms of a properly sized system. Now, before I dive into that, if you've made it this far and have enjoyed the content, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And post a comment in the comment section below, letting us know what you think. Did this answer your questions or does it make you think that your system is oversized now? We do read all the comments and although we don't respond all the time right away, we definitely will read them, do our best to respond, and appreciate you taking the time to post a comment. And the way to tell if your system is properly sized for your home is that it should, number one, be running constantly, and it should, number two, be able to satisfy set point. Now, when I say satisfy set point, what I mean is the temperature that you have it set at on the thermostat. However, because some people's definition of comfortable means it feels like a meat locker, caveat is the set point is within the design temperatures I mentioned earlier. Now, most homes in the United States are designed to cool down to 74 degrees. And if your system is sized properly, it's designed to be running constantly during the summer months. So if you're wondering if it's normal for your air conditioner to run three, four, or five hours straight, when even all day, in some instances, without shutting off, that is perfectly normal and it means it's running efficiently. And this is especially true for inverter air conditioners. And if you haven't watched our video on the Daikin fit, stay tuned because after this, there'll be a link popping up on the screen and it explains how inverters work and why they are more efficient. And it also explains why the Daikin fit is one of our favorite air conditioners. The truth is that what causes big spikes in your electric bill is when a single stage system cycles on and off constantly throughout the day. Your air conditioner is designed to run constantly. So if it is comfortable in your home and able to hit 72 to 74 degrees, then it is probably keeping up just fine. 
However, if you have doubts, it's not a bad idea to have a professional come take a look or a second opinion to make sure everything is working properly. And if you happen to be in the Denver Metro or Colorado Springs area or one of the other markets we are expanding to, we are the only company that comes out for free for all first time customers. And there's a link in the description below that you can click to schedule online. So thanks again. We hope you found this content helpful. And if you haven't already watched this next video about the Daikin Fit, uh, watch this next to find out why it's one of our favorite ACs. Thanks again for tuning in and we will catch you on the next episode.